Joining me now is Ukraine's ambassador to the United States, Oksana Makarova. Ambassador, happy new year and thank you very much for being with us. Uh, so Congress has Hello, not approved the happy military. New year. Well, it's, it's good to see you, but um, I, of course, the political challenge now is that Congress has not approved the money. There's no agreement on the table being held up by the border dispute. It's tied up with the Israel funding. What is the situation right now as you face this new barrage from Russia? Yes, thank you. I mean, the, the past couple of days have been horrible in Ukraine. So uh, we have seen, unfortunately, a re repetition of what we've seen in 2022 and 2023. And more than 500 together missiles and uh, these Iranian-made drones have been sent to Ukraine since December 29th, uh, with the most recent one yesterday. And the damage is uh, very big in so many cities. It's Kyiv, it's Kharkiv, as you said, but it's also Lviv, it's Zaporizhia, it's so many other uh, civilian uh, populated areas in Ukraine. And we already have hundreds of people who are killed. We have uh, hundreds of people injured and 50 killed, including a Professor Shevtsova from my alma mater, Ukrainian alma, uh, University, Kiev Mahila Academy, a very well-known hydrobiologist. And it's just, you know, a horrible war crime after the war crime. And we are intensively using the so much valued air defense that the U.S. and other uh, partners are provided to us and using other capabilities which we need in order to push Russians back and not to allow them to conduct this genocide in the middle of Europe. But of course, you know, it's critically important for us to stay the course and for us to have the continued support. I would even say existentially important at this moment. But we together can, can turn this, as you said, desperate times into hopeful times. And um, we are very hopeful that Congress will come back soon and will be able to support Ukraine and Israel and, and other important issues with the additional supplementary funding. Ambassador, there was a prisoner exchange today, the largest uh, since the war began, since the invasion, and the first in five months. So and it's 240 Ukrainian prisoners of war now returned to Ukraine, which is great news, I know, for your country. Uh, it doesn't at all, you know, reach the, the number of people who are probably still being held. But the question is, so there were conversations going on. There's a lot of pressure, as you know, and some reports, New York Times and others, reporting that Vladimir Putin might be ready to negotiate. Is it time for some sort of a partial ceasefire, some kind of negotiation, given just the, the terrible beating that Ukraine is suffering? Uh, from all of this going into its second year now. Thank you, Andrea. Well, I think, you know, Vladimir Putin's words and actions, unfortunately, is the best answer uh, to this, uh, you know, hopes of some people that he's ready to negotiate. He's ready to kill and he kills so many people on a daily basis. And uh, we have seen this before. We have seen this in 2014 and in 2015, uh, when Ukraine was ready to negotiate, when you, Ukraine did everything possible and sometimes impossible in order to restore our territorial integrity and return the attacked and grabbed illegally parts of Ukraine through diplomatic solutions. And Putin used all this time to prepare and to store all these missiles and, and uh, in order to attack. So, look, nobody wants peace more than Ukrainians. But we all know too well, and President Zelensky put it in the peace formula negotiations more than a year ago, that it's only peace through strength that is achievable when you deal with autocrats and genocidal aggressors like Russia. So we have to be able to defend ourselves. We have to be able to defend Europe, because let's remind again all the friends, what are we fighting in Ukraine for? It's not just our territories and our people and our loved ones. It's also the democracy, freedom, because that's the only reason Putin attacked us in the first place, because we don't want to be destroyed and subjugated by him, and we don't want to become part of Russian aggressive military machine together with the club of this uh, his, his, his bodies from Iran and North Korea and terroristic regimes like Hamas and others. So, you know, we have to win this one to show that international rules exist, that freedom and democracy can defend themselves. And uh, I mean, of course, we are ready to negotiate on 
uh, you know, the future reparations and a season of Russian assets, but we cannot negotiate on principles, neither us nor all of our friends and allies. So it's time to actually step up our defense. It's time to support each other. It's time to win. And let me remind you also that Mr. Putin is the indicted criminal for abduction of Ukrainian children, uh, who still so many are in, in Russia, held against their will, uh, as many as, as, as Ukrainian civilians and as a, our prisoners of war. So yes, today is a good day, because 200 of them, and you have seen the videos, how uh, you know malnourished and, and tortured they have been. It's clear even if, if you watch this, this videos, but all of them are so happy to be home. All of them were singing Ukrainian anthem. And uh, you know, it's our duty as uh, as Democrats, as Christians, as people who believe in principles and values, to free all of them and to return peace. And we have to stay strong in order to be able to do that.